Welcome, one and all, to another episode of the OIC Podcast. My name is Noah Hansen, if you don't know already, and I'm here with, of course, Kevin Peterson. Well, hello, Noah Hansen. What is faithfulness? Well, faithfulness is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit Ooh. in the Bible. It has a lot to do with Christianity. Of course it does. Why is that? Well, we're going to be discussing that in this podcast, and it has to do with science as well. So stay tuned for the end of this podcast when we're going to be outlining why faith is an aspect of science as well as ancestral and biblical points of view. Yes. But Kevin, I'm going to let you start it off here with some ancestral wisdom for us on the topic of faithfulness. Faithfulness from our ancestors has allowed us to be able to remain positive, to be able to remain optimistic, to be able to remain in a positive moving forward, creating a new path for our lives on a daily basis. Our ancestors, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, and all the stories that they've ever told, and if you grew up like I did, listening to my ancestors, they had wonderful, amazing stories, and a lot of the stories was specifically on faithfulness. Not only faithfulness of character, not only faithfulness of who you are as a person, but faithfulness to God as well, bringing that marriage into the fold of the family. Right, Kevin. Yeah, and I like that point you made because I recently made a post on the topic of honor. And what I outlined in that post, it was something that I actually learned from one of the Hillsdale online courses, which are free, by the way. So go check those out. I'll have the link in the description for you. Uh, a lot of great stuff there. But what I learned in the ethics course on Aristotle was something that Aristotle wrote that outlined that it's the object of what is being honored. Yes. That is even more important than the honor itself. Honor is commendable. Honor is good. But it's the object of who you are honoring and what you are honoring that matters even more. And it's the same with faithfulness. It's if you are faithful to yourself, that's only going to get you so far. If you're faithful to your parents, that's only going to get you so far. Now, those are good things. You should be faithful to yourself. You should be faithful to your parents. But there is one object of faithfulness that is even more important. And if you haven't guessed already, <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about that in biblical, uh, in the biblical portion of this podcast. Amen. So faithfulness, what is the meaning of faithfulness? And faithfulness is the concept of unfailingly remaining loyal to someone or something and putting that loyalty into consistent practice, regardless of extenuating circumstances. Literally, it is a state of being full of faith in the sense of steady devotion to a person, thing, or a concept. Yeah, it's important to really get a good idea, get grounded in these types of subjects that we're talking about on this podcast. That's why we often give you the definition, just as Kevin just did, of what we're talking about. Because if you don't have an understanding of the basics, how can you have an understanding of the more complicated parts of it? Now, there are six characteristic traits of faithfulness. One... Commitment. Commitment is an internal act, an act of heart and mind of, de of dedicating oneself to something, right? Number two, love. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, The love of Christ can strengthen me. This is the right motive of faithfulness. Three, long-suffering. For those that have not yet lost a loved one, long-suffering is being able to miss them greatly on a daily basis while still loving them. Four is patience. We all need patience. We all need to work on patience because if you don't work on being patient, you end up becoming a patient in a hospital, right? If not worse. Number five is endurance. You need to be able to know at what length and how far you will go to be able to sustain the faithfulness that you have in what you believe in. And number six 
is steadfastness. You need to be able to keep at it over and over and over again to where consistency is just the common practice for what you are wanting to accomplish. So those are the top six characteristic traits of faithfulness. Very good. And it's important to go over those because a lot goes into some of those. When you're missing someone after they've passed, but yes. you still love them, yes, that's counted as faithfulness. Now, why is that? Well, a lot of people actually get angry when they have someone leave them. Yes. And it, it, not of their own accord, of course, just death, you know. Mm -hmm. But people get angry at death. People think that it's something that they need to take personally and something that they naturally do sometimes without even knowing it. So that anger can cause them to kind of turn away and think worse of these people, like, oh, they abandoned me yes. type of mindset, right? Faithfulness means that you trust them, means that you know that they are, you know, not against you, that you know that they still love you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't believe in an afterlife, then it gets a little more complex, of course, in that region, but you still love them regardless because of your faithfulness to who they were when they were still with you. Yes, because the bottom line is that regardless of what you view as an afterlife, you all know that you end up being spirit of some sort. The reason why I say that confidently is because of the fact that you are spirit wrapped in a flesh vessel. Your heart, your soul go somewhere, right? It doesn't stay with your vessel. Right. Some people believe it. You, you know, you go to the fertilizer pit, you're down in the earth, and, you know, you become one with nature, mm -hmm. uh, sort of materialist view. And then others think that there's a separate entity from the body, mm -hmm. something that can be separated, but it's still you, it's still conscious. And that's one really profound point to make when talking about the afterlife, because consciousness, there's really no scientific explanation for consciousness there's a bunch of things firing off in our brain mm -hmm. i guess i'll, I'll pre-note the science portion of this podcast right. by saying this but consciousness itself is not pinpointed to one of those or several of those going off at one time because it's not limited see our consciousness is what puts all those firings together mm -hmm. because like you said because it's not limited right our body is limited to those firings off and those do have a certain effect on us but it's something that because we have free will, because we have consciousness, we can choose whether to go with those bodily influences, those firings off in our brain, mm -hmm. or to take our brains, hearts, and minds in a different direction. And that's what heart math teaches, by the way. Absolutely. Which is why we highlight that so much, because it teaches you how to utilize your free will to bring in positivity, to bring in good feelings, good chemicals. Free will is important. When it comes to faithfulness, because without it, it's irrelevant. Okay. It really is. Because if you don't have a predestined or pre-thought of idea or mindset on how you're going to act and react proactively. Yes. Then it becomes non-essential. Right, right. I believe faithfulness can be integrated as a part of your character. It it can be, but yes. that's after a period of time where you have to consciously choose to do that with your free will. So I see what you're saying there. Yeah. So, what is faithfulness in a relationship? Being faithful in a relationship means understanding that in order to be with someone, you have to be with them 100. percent Listen, we all try our very best to be with our loved ones 100% of the time. But in honesty, we have jobs, we have careers, we have things outside of the home that takes us away from our loved ones, right? Faithfulness is a mindset. It's an embodiment. It's a practice of the soul being able to say, in my absence, therefore I am with you, right? So faithfulness, we can do the very best that we can with what we have, 
but we all have to be able to sacrifice a percentage of our time away from our 100% family Mm -hmm. and sometimes our own selves. Yeah, and that was outlined beautifully by Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, He says he was with them in spirit. Mm -hmm. And so you still have the faithfulness in your support of the people who you're faithful to. Yes. Though you may not be with them at every single moment in every single, you know, point of the day. Absolutely. Same thing goes for God towards us. God is faithful towards us. And you don't see him right in front of you every minute of every day. You may see different promptings by him, but you don't see Jesus Christ right in front of you every day. If you did, then this whole entire world would have a very big perspective change to go through real quickly. Uh, So his faithfulness is something that we count on. And just like we can count on God's faithfulness, we need to be the people who others can count on our faithfulness towards them. Yes. Know that we aren't going to turn our backs on them. So let's take a gentle walk biblically, and let me start this off. The benefits of being faithful. God preserves, protects, and guards his faithful. God promises his faithful. God blesses his faithful. God strengthens his faithful. God guides his faithful. Now, Noah, can you please take the viewers and listeners on a gentle walk and complete the rest of that? Well, yeah, God does all of those things. When you're faithful to God, he's faithful to you. And this all has to do with God's covenant promises, right? So God's promises are what he tells his people that this is for sure. This is how it is. This is who I am. His promises are his own outspoken message of faithfulness towards his people. And who are his people? Well, his people are the ones who believe in Jesus, who love Jesus, and who try to be like Jesus by following his commandments. Mm-hmm. And there, it goes real deep, listeners. If you haven't gotten familiar with the gospel message and why it is so powerful, I'll just give you a short and sweet version of it. When Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again on the third day, that was a message of faithfulness. Why? Because Jesus told us before he went on the cross that he was going to die and be resurrected on the third day. And he did indeed do that. Mm -hmm. So we can count him as trustworthy for that reason. Now, the biggest message of his death on the cross for the remission of sins, was that God loves us. Yes. Greatest news in the entire world. Can't get better than that. The creator of the entire universe has not turned his back on us, even if you are still stuck in, stuck in sin. Right. So that's the gospel message. It, show, it, it creates an entire foundation that no other religion on earth has, that no other faith in the whole entire world has, because it's a faith that's based in love and in not works. Yeah. Now, you can see small portions of this in a family unit, in people who are very close to one another, in trustworthiness, and that all comes from God, biblically. Mm-hmm. That all comes from God already. So that still <laughs> has God included. But when you have the death on the cross of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, and what he did after the resurrection, he appeared to his disciples, and he gave us a great commission to be able to reach out to all the nations, not just one nation, but all the nations. Mm -hmm. It shows that God truly does love his creation, and it forms a foundation of love so that we, instead of working our way to salvation, trust in Jesus, repent for our sins, turn from our sin, and then we have salvation because of what he did. And what he did... And what he did inspires the love in us to be able to be like him, yes. to be able to follow what he says for us to do. And let me plant the seed in your foundation. Proverbs 3, 3, and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Yes, easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. So we as human beings, we're in a fallen state. This world is not what it should be. 
I don't know if you've noticed that already, listeners, but hey, if you've spent a few years here on Earth, then you've probably seen some messed up stuff. We all have, right? You flip on the news, that's all you really need, as far as you need to go to see some messed up stuff nowadays. We live in a fallen world. It's very clear. This isn't heaven. But heaven does exist, and that's God's message to us, is that heaven does exist. He wants you to be there with him, so much so that he's willing to die and reconcile us to him out of love, not out of works, not out of, you know, fear, Mm -hmm. but out of love for what he did for us, his showing that love and expressing that love. And so, you know, the mystery of why this world is so messed up is a very deep dive. It is. And that's what a lot of people have an issue with. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it's very clear this world is messed up. Right. It's very clear this isn't heaven. Right. So you have to have faith that heaven does exist, and then faith in Jesus and what he did to be able to access that. Yes. And 1 Corinthians 10, 12, and 13 says this. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. And what a great message that is. That's a relief. (laughs) What a relief that God makes a way out of sin for us. Can't be tempted beyond what we're capable of overcoming. So, Noah, now we've come to the scientific part of things to be able to resonate bringing the ancestral part, the biblical part, and now the scientific part in a three-part harmony with each other. So, Noah, can you please expand more on the scientific part of our podcast? Yes, thank you, Kevin. So believe it or not, listeners, a part of science is faith. You may have never heard this before. You may have thought, you know, well, science, that's, you know, beyond a doubt. Well, not exactly. In fact, what we outlined in the last few podcasts, the Skepticism Podcast and the Open Mindedness Podcast, is that the entire worldview of science, which was scientific materialism, Mm-hmm. That's been disproven with the introduction of quantum physics. Absolutely. And we outlined some scientific studies in those podcasts to be able to show you how we know this, what we've seen. Now, we don't know what the spirit is. I'm going to call it the spirit. We don't know what the spirit is, but we know that it's there. We know that there's some communication going on in a vacuum where Mm -hmm. there is no matter. There is no molecules. There's no connection. But there is a connection, is what we found out. So science has faith. Why? Because in order to even do a scientific experiment, you have to have faith that there's going to be some outcome and you're going to gain truth, gain knowledge from that outcome. So believe it or not, listeners, if you are stuck, what I want to say is stuck in a scientific mindset, where all that is can be proven by science, well, guess what? You still have to have faith that science can even do that in the first place, right? So this this may be difficult for some people to take, and I, I've seen many people that they don't like hearing this because faith is, is like a bad word for a lot of people. Faith is something that's uh, blind to them. But no, faith is actually based on evidence, And so a lot of people will say, jumping real quick back to biblical faithfulness, a lot of people will say, well, you have faith in Jesus Christ, you lived 2,000 years ago, there's blind faith there. You have no real evidence for that being true. Well, the evidence is right there in the Bible. It's a written record, and it shows a very authentic viewpoint of what Jesus did, where he walked, how he talked, who was there with him, what he did, and the resurrection, you know, his his life, death, and resurrection. All three of those are accounted for in the Bible very clearly, and it it is an authentic text. This Bible I'm talking about has been picked over and picked over for thousands of years, literally. And to this day, no one's been able to get any one shred of evidence 
that the Bible is not true. So when we are reading a text, a historical text like this, there's historical evidence to back it up because of how it's written, Mm -hmm. because of the context in it. Even though it's not in a chronological order, even though it's not on a timetable, even though it's not perfectly laid out, there are ways that you can be able to lay it out all on a table and to be able to get as very close and precise as possible mm-hmm. timeline-wise as far as what everyone did, right? Yes, and of course there's poetry in the Bible as well. It has nothing to do with a chronological, historical uh, right. account. Right. But the bottom line is is that if God wanted the Bible to be in chronological order, he would have made it so. Right. For those that truly believe in God, no matter in what English language that you read the Bible, because you got the NIV, you got all these other variants. Right. Some better than others. Some are better than others. But the bottom line is, is that no matter which one you read, they all circle back to the same source. They mm-hmm. all circle so go back to the same meaning, right? That's right, and the same manuscripts as well. Mm-hmm. And so, believe it or not, listeners, real quick, manuscript evidence for the Bible far exceeds any other text from antiquity. Yes. So Amen. that's, a, you know, the historical evidence is overwhelming if you want to find a reason to trust what the Bible says. But the reason why I brought this up is that, scientifically speaking, is that we have all these books in the Bible— and all these people that had their own story, mm-hmm. somehow, some way, through some sort of intervention, mm-hmm. in a godly way, that the Bible was put together in a way that not only makes sense to those that understand each book in the Bible, each person's walk, But as you take a bigger, deeper dive into the Bible, you'll start to be able to see hidden little words and codes broken down that actually are better than Nostradamus, better than all the great geniuses in the world at being able to then give you information that's beyond the information that was put in there in the first place. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. It's personal. It has personal personal application. It's the most personally applicable text that we have, I believe. So, But what I was getting at is that Bible is the most faithful representation that you could ever show someone. You want to know what faithful is like? Hold the Bible once. See all the people in the Bible that made the Bible, what it is today. And then try to tell me that they weren't faithful in trying to be able to make that a reality, right? The whole thing is, is that no matter who listens of what religion, Mm -hmm. nobody hates or should hate all these different religions. Right. But please, someone for the love of God, Show me what religion God was, and I'll follow you to the end of the earth. Now, that's a powerful statement, Kevin. Are you saying that you'd go back on the faith that you have now to be able to follow someone who proves himself to be, you know, someone resurrected today? What I'm trying to say is is that religion kills. Mm-hmm. Faith restores. Mm-hmm. There has not ever been a religion that has ever fully saved a soul because there's always some man's interpretation or law, rule, regulation, right? something that then takes them off their original path. Uh Mm Mm-hmm. To then takes them away from God for someone else's benefit. Right. It's it's the same point that we made earlier in this podcast, that if you believe that you're saved by doing works, by following one certain religion, mm-hmm. then that's not faith in Jesus. That's not faith in what he did. It's not about what we 
can do. It's about what he already has done. Right. So, so Jesus is the one who saves. Right. If someone were to resurrect from the dead today after saying, you know, I'm going to die and resurrect on the third day. Yes, I would take, I would take them very seriously. Mm-hmm. Very seriously. Because that is a work of God. You can't have someone resurrect from the dead. Now, there is uh, necromancy, yeah. you know, in antiquity. There's the stories of necromancy. That is not the same. Right. But the bottom line, getting back to faithfulness, is that if you do not believe in yourself, have faith in yourself, trust yourself, value yourself, appreciate yourself, or have any belief systems at all, then faithfulness is irrelevant because it's 100% absent within your own soul, within your own being, right? Right, are you saying if you don't have faith, belief, and trust in yourself, then what you're doing is all just a sort of going through the motions? You become the embodiment of something else other than who you were designed to be. Right, it's not ingrained in you, it's just, you know, going through the motions. And you may have multiple different mindsets about what you're doing while you're doing it then. It's like the uh, Pharisees Mm -hmm. that Jesus was was, um, criticizing. Right. When they were praying outside the temple, that's a that's a showing of your faith. And it can be authentic, but what they were doing it for, what their mindset was during that motion, was they wanted the approval of people. So yeah, the, the not, faith... not the approval of God. Right. Exactly. So I understand that we have taken you on kind of a deep or a deeper dive than normal in today's podcast. Woo-hoo! But the bottom line is that faithfulness in every area of your life is as equally as vital as you taking breath. Because without it, you end up becoming a puppet, a pawn, or a player in someone else's game. There has to be a point in time in your life to where you literally reinstate or reinstall faithfulness into your life to be able to make your life what God intended for it to be in the first place. Prayer works if you work it, but the right prayer, the right words said, anytime creates that level of faithfulness that can't be broken, Mm -hmm. that can't be torn or taken without your consent. Indeed, and that's why Paul says, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Praying without ceasing, how do you pray without ceasing? Do you have to talk all the time? No. Prayer can be a thought. Yes. It's how you pray that matters. It's, It's your mindset. It's your internal workings while you pray that matters. And then God will externally answer those prayers if you have ears to hear, if you have eyes to see. So, give yourself a hand today by being able to raise your hand up to God and thank Him for the faithfulness that He has installed or has given you for you to give back unto Him. Amen. That's how we become the gift. So, give God the hand praise today because He is celebrating you. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the OIC Podcast, Omnipresent Information Connection. Oh, I see. And of course, visit our website, www.inanewway.com, to see all of the content that we have for you there. We've got posts, videos, podcasts, merchandise, courses, forums where we can have personal discussions one on one, even. Uh, if you contact us through the OIC Advantage at inanewway.com email, Thank you once again for listening. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this podcast and share it with someone who can benefit today. And we will meet you on the next podcast. This has been another life-enhancing, authenticated podcast aired by the OIC and brought to you by the faithful OIC sponsors and contributors. Please tune in every week and subscribe to our podcast. And while you're there, explore our website, with all the posts, videos, and podcasts 
that we have created with you in mind. While you're on the journey through our website, you will see our Patreon page where you can become a faithful contributor yourself with the freedom to be a part of our team today. Thank you.